It's time for Tuesday Terror, here on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG-13, suggesting that children under the age of 13 should listen accompanied with an adult. You are in a land of darkness and fear. Somewhere between waking and sleeping are night terrors. Night Terrors, an anthology of horror and suspense. Tonight's episode, They, Two Plays by Paul Mannering. Down here, you have to get quite creative if you want to end it all. Did you hear that McLaren left us? He ate at least a dozen blocks of toilet sanitizer. When they found him, he was gone. I saw his face in the glow of Alvarez's flashlight. His face was stained a beautiful shade of blue. Our tale takes place in the dank depths of a nuclear fallout shelter after a global apocalypse. Utterly cut off from the outside world, the huddled survivors have only themselves to rely on in the clinging darkness and their fear of the unknown that lies beyond the absence of light. Hello? Relax, Peterson. It's just the infrastructure creaking. Temperature must be changing outside. Probably dropping to well below freezing. Nuclear winters are supposed to be harsh. God, Walters! I had the nightmare again. The flash. When I was blinded. Yes. Well, you are quite the celebrity, Peterson. Blinded by the flash of a nuclear blast. You should be doing the talk show circuit. My life after the end of the world. Still, if the generators hadn't failed, if we had light, we might have kept it together longer. In a world without light, a blind man is... What, Peterson? A king? A god? Or just irrelevant? Perhaps you should talk to Dr. Cadman. I'm sure he would enjoy a good session of psychoanalysis. I think he's busy. What with his new position as advisor to the general and, of course, the suicides. Shame about them. Down here, you have to get quite creative if you want to end it all. Did you hear that McLaren left us? He ate at least a dozen blocks of toilet sanitizer. When they found him, he was gone. I saw his face in the glow of Alvarez's flashlight. His face was stained a beautiful shade of blue. I remember blue. I remember the sky being such a vivid shade of blue that it looked like a painting. I remember paintings, too. The great works of Picasso, Da Vinci, Van Gogh. All gone now, except for a few in the vaults. I've asked Alvarez to bring them out, to let us put them up around the place, at least until the flashlights fail. (laughs) Alvarez said that art has no place in the new world. We must learn to live in darkness. Only by adapting to the absence of light can we remain strong. (laughs) I say, if we're the last vestiges of humanity, At least we can have some examples of our achievements to remind ourselves of just how far we have fallen. Ah, but did we fall, or were we pushed? It has all gone wrong so fast. How long has it been now? Three months? Twelve? I think it's been 187 days. I'm sure it was 45 when Captain... Oh, sorry. General Alvarez conducted his coup. That was only 24 days after the lights quit. Not that I noticed a difference. (sighs) The day of the coup. The day of Alvarez's scheduled court-martial for raping that ensign. The day he stabbed Colonel Matthews to death and proclaimed himself General Alvarez. 
truly a day that shall live forever in the annals of history of the New World. I heard it was well beyond rape. Cadman said he tore chunks of her off with his teeth. No worse than what they did to Sergeant McLeod and his band of Colonel Matthew supporters. They died defending the old Constitution and the final orders received by this facility. Massive nuclear launch detected. Multiple strikes imminent. Secure facility and maintain DEFCON 1 status until relieved. God be with us all. <laughs> God was killed in the blast. Like you should have been. Damn fool. Staying at your post, manually lowering the blast shutters over the observation window. What did you think when the flash came? Someone taking your picture? I don't remember. Just the flash. I felt like my entire being was lit up. I can only see darkness until I sleep. Yeah, you're luckier than you think, Petey. Since the lights went out, I've been hearing things. Whispers, mostly. Like the dead are all around, asking me to join them. I hear things too, Walters. I hear songs and conversations from before. I hear my mom crying. Sometimes I think I hear scraping and scratching, even knocking, like someone is outside and is trying to get in. Hell, if they had some torch batteries, I'd let them in. I heard that the food is running out too, Peterson. McLaren, before he took himself out, said that the stores were nearly empty. The place had been emptied for a routine replacement of old stock. The replacement delivery never arrived. I think that's why he took himself out. He saw what's coming. What do you think is going to happen, Walters, when we have no more food? Will Alvarez crack open the blast doors and creep out into the darkness of the nuclear winter? <sighs> no. I think we'll stay here until hunger becomes the only reason to survive. Then the strong will fall upon the weak and devour them until only one remains. Peterson, when things get really bad, when we've all gone crazy and we're creeping around in the darkness, sniffing for each other's scent, hunting for morsels of warm flesh, I want you to kill me. Do it quick and clean. You can have what's left. But I don't want to go torn to bits by the rest of them. Walters... Walters, you and I are friends. Come to my voice. Find my hand. Here. It's going to be all right. I will ease your passing from the darkness when the time comes. Coffee? Sure, that light cream though, okay? Your choice. That crap will give you cancer, you know. Risking cancer I can live with. It's staying awake that I find hard. Why don't you listen to the show? The experiment is providing invaluable data. Nah, after the first couple of weeks I got tired of it. I get all I need to know from reading the summary reports. Let's see. Peterson continuing to develop dependent relationship with Walters. Alvarez has segregated the two remaining women of the test group from general population. Claims he is securing them for future breeding stock to repopulate the world. That Alvarez is an off-the-shelf psychopath. Oh, and that is your professional opinion, Doctor? It's been documented. Alvarez started showing signs of aberrant behavior 11 days into the experiment. 11 days? How long have they been in there now? 75 days. Sensory deprivation has had the expected effect. After we cut power to the lights, temporal perception became completely distorted. Now Peterson thinks it's been over 180 days. 
75 days, and of the original 35 subjects, 9 had committed suicide and 4 were murdered. Living in the dark will drive you over the edge faster than almost anything. Well, at the rate they're degenerating, we should have complete failure of control the next three to six weeks. The brass had better be satisfied with the results of this project. Simulating a nuclear war and monitoring personnel for post-trauma behaviors is not something Congress needs to get wind of. Even if they did, they would appreciate the value of our research. After all, if there ever was a nuclear conflict, it's their asses that would be clamoring to get into a secure shelter facility. This experiment is providing us with invaluable knowledge to ensure that control in the bunker is maintained until it is safe to emerge. I just pray that the day never comes that we have to use that knowledge. say that it's the quiet ones you've got to watch. But I suppose in this case, the quiet ones are doing the watching. The fates are cruel, but no fates are crueler than the ones meted out to man by his fellows. It makes you wonder whether the very earth itself is one big laboratory, and the quiet ones are watching us. I like to screen my calls. Let's let the answering machine get it. Hello. No one is available to take your call. Please leave a message after the tone. Hello? Hello? Up. No. No, no, don't pick up. R run. Yes, run. Get away. Whatever you do, don't let me speak to you. I think it's how they spread the disease. Please, just listen. Listen and, and remember what I tell you. They may have told you things, things they, they will have assured you are the truth, but they lied. No one ever tells the truth anymore. I don't believe anybody ever did. <laughs> I could be lying to you right now. <laughs> I hope I'm not. <laughs> Look, I, I, I just need you to listen. Please, please, just, just listen. Uh, make up your own mind. You can still think for yourself, can't you? out of the ordinary. 
I, I was driving to work uh, two, yeah, two, two, two mornings ago, and in this, the usual stress of rush hour traffic, a new voice suddenly spoke with a quiet intensity in my head. Kill them all, it said. My, my rational mind hardly noticed it. It was a, a passing gesture, a, a flash of road rage. Well, yeah, killing every other road user would have made my morning commute easier. But there was no urge to act on the, on the suggestion. That morning passed uneventfully. In a post-launch meeting, something worse than that voice happened. A visiting exec, one of those new breed of college-educated don't-equal men, destroy them blonde goddesses. She was all TNA. But she talked sense, and she held my attention. Hell that that is, until an image of her naked, tied down with barbed wire, covered in filth, and screaming while some shadowy figure did things to her I don't even want to begin to describe flashed in my mind. I started, sure that I dozed off in some stress-induced nightmare, but it was real. I could smell her fear. I awoke to laughter, but I wasn't even directed to me. There wasn't, it wasn't even coming from anyone at the table. For the rest of the day, I, I was nervous and, and flinched at every sound and, and sudden movement. By the time I laid down to sleep that night, I was hearing snippets of words and conversations, uh, like the half-heard echoes of a crossed phone wire. I checked and double-checked radios and stereos and TVs to make sure they were switched off. My wife assured me several times that she had not spoken. The only reason I believed her was because the voices I was hearing were predominantly male. Then the dreams came last night. Terrible, lurid fantasies of rape and murder, of torture and cannibalism, uh, living bodies writhed and rotted, screaming at me with torn and blackened tongues. And with the visions came a stench I can't even begin to describe. By the morning, I was feeling sick and fevered. I made it into the office, despite the, the fact that every few moments in my peripheral vision, small black shadows like cats or, or large rats would scamper past while the voices ordered me to stab and crush and burn and cut and rape and strangle and impale. I tried to speak calmly to myself, concluded that I was coming down with a, a bad flu or, or maybe worse yet, yeah, some kind of nervous breakdown. I decided that I would apply for some early vacation time, uh, or perhaps take a long vacation weekend, or make an appointment to see Dr. Greenlane. <laughs> None of which I did. <laughs> I did, however, bash in my secretary's skull with a desk lamp. <laughs> One of those, one, one, one of those solid metal base things. Of course, it wasn't my secretary. I was battering to death. It was something horrible. Some.
something with eyes that leaked stinking pus uh, and lep leprous hands that, that groped at my clean flesh. <laughs> no one even noticed. <laughs> I came home early this afternoon and found my wife dead on the floor. I, I, I remembered that, that, she, that she had revealed her, her true face that morning while cooking eggs. <laughs> I had to bash in her head with a skillet <laughs> until, until I couldn't see those rotting eyes staring at me anymore. <laughs> I sat down in the den. I sat with the shades drawn and the lights off. I sat in the late afternoon gloom and listened to what was going on around me. I learned some things. Things I can't share, not even with you. I learned that I have demons in my head. Demons, for want of a better word. Demons that corrupt and twist and destroy everything pure and good and clean. <laughs> They're laughing even now. <laughs> They've won. They're quoting me to go on and do more for them. <laughs> Destroy children. <laughs> and attack women. And torture. Kill. Rape. Eat living flesh off the bones. <laughs> My story as a warning, or, or, a, or a guide, or, or a moral lesson. I know what must be done now. I've already cleaned my gun. Now I'm loading it. Tell the coroner this wasn't a suicide. It was an assassination. <laughs> <laughs> You have been listening to Night Terrors, an anthology of horror and suspense. They, two plays by Paul Mannery. Featured in the cast were Mark Kalita as Peterson, Ellie Hirschman as Walters, Josh W. Spencer as Observer 1, and David Roche as Observer 2, with Mark Brzee as the Man on the Machine. The series is produced and directed by Mark Brzee. Co-production and post-production by Chris Snyder. The executive producer for Darker Projects is Eric Busby. This has been a Darker Projects production. So until next time, sleep well. One man. Detective Inspector Darian Tame. I have an appointment. One destiny. An Imperial ship. From before the fall. 
to free humanity from the forces of tyranny. You have been found guilty of crimes against the hegemony, and your sentence is death. Darien Tain will pick up a battle standard, cast down 200 years before. It seems to be a journal of Admiral Von Gribben, the man who betrayed the Empire. Finding friends in unlikely places. Still here, Elias? Thought you'd left the second we docked. Where would I go? Together, they will embark upon a journey to free their people from ANSYS oppression. Damn. Damn! Sorry, kid. I'm not sure we're gonna make it. Uncovering along the way the sins that led to humanity's downfall and reforging alliances long thought forgotten. For the memory of a better time. Two hundred years of slavery, of persecution, and of tyranny are at an end. Yes! Open space. Time to... Jump! Darker Projects invites you to join us for the adventure of a lifetime. Join us for The Falcon Banner. There are a number of things that we can all do to help stop the spread of the coronavirus and protect ourselves and our families. One is simply to clean your hands often. Wash your hands often with soap and water for at least 20 seconds, especially after you've been in a public place or after blowing your nose, coughing, or sneezing. If you don't have access to soap and water, then make sure you use a hand sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol. And finally, avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth with unwashed hands. These are some simple things that we can all do to help protect ourselves and our families from the spread of coronavirus. Be well, everybody.